Hey, got a question for you. Do you have a plan on how you're going to start to develop the spin serve? Well, if that's been a challenge for you, you're in luck because I've teamed up with Kevin Garlington from Total Tennis Domination. My name is Peter Freeman from Crunch Time Coaching, and we've recently made courses, our own courses. He's made a slice serve course, and I've made a kick serve course. But what we want to show you today is a drill that you can do to start mastering your placement on the, on the spin serves, whether you're hitting a kick or a slice, your control, and ultimately the spin that you're putting on the ball. And stick around to the end of the video too because we've also added some bonus training for you guys. So this is a very special video. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you the kick serve today. And what I'm gonna show you is just the possibilities you have of really getting that ball off of the court. So the next shot you have, if it even comes back because you're gonna hit such an awesome kick serve, is gonna be a really easy open court shot, all right? So this is called the kickoff drill. Let's get started, and then Kevin's gonna show you the slice serve. Okay guys, so the next game we're gonna play is kickoff, and this is gonna really help your serve. Again, this is something you could do against a buddy or uh, by yourself and just make it a game. Now what I've got over there, what I've got over there are three targets, and I'm trying to hit inside the target. So we've got the red ball, and I'm trying to, if I can hit the red ball, uh, to the net. If I can hit it in the court, I'm going to give myself three points. If I can get it between the red and the blue, I'm going to give myself two points. And if I get it between the blue and the orange, I'm going to give myself one point. And you can go, okay, I've got to do this game until I get to 50 points or something like that. And I suggest you actually start very close to the net on the opposite court, the court right next to you on the doubles line. Okay, so I'm on the doubles line, you can see, very close to the net. And this is gonna really help me get that ball to kick off the court. You wanna develop a kick serve that you can make go off the court, just like you wanna have a slice serve that can go off the court. So this is a great drill to just, you know, kinda of cheat and easily feel what that feels like to get extreme with it. Oh, I don't know. It's up to you guys if I got a two-pointer or a three-pointer. Uh, I'll let you guys decide. Oh, I hit the basket again. Again, are you giving me three points or two points? And boom, I want, oh, now that's a two-pointer. And it just, you know, went towards my camera over there. So hopefully my camera's okay. So this is a lot of fun. This is a lot. See, there's another two-pointer. But you can see those balls going way off the court here. There is a three-pointer. Now that's exciting. I just want to keep practicing. Oh, there's another two-point. So this will really give you the feel of it. A lot of fun, guys. A lot of fun. There's a three-pointer. Now, the key is when you start to feel pretty good that you're getting mostly two and threes, I would like to work on this a little longer for myself actually before I move back because I want to get more threes. But let's say I'm, I'm pretty satisfied, which I'm not satisfied, but let's just say I am. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep moving my way up the line. I want to see when this becomes really challenging and see the more you move up the line, it's going to be harder to get that three pointer. Uh, but I want to see how far I can move and still get those three points. I hit the basket. There's a, there's a three-pointer. See, so I'm also getting the feel of this. There's another three-pointer. So even though it's getting harder, the more I do this, I'm getting the feel of it because it's actually harder back here than it is up there, but I'm starting to get the feel of it. Okay, guys, so I think you guys get the point of that video. And, and then, you know, after you'd come from the other court, you would just come here to the doubles alley and move up here, and then you'd come up close to the singles line and then you keep moving in. So you can really see your capability of, of how much, depending on where you stand on the court, how much can you get that ball to kick off the court. Great drill. I'm gonna hand it over to Kevin now for his slice serve uh, drill. I'm looking forward to it. Take it away, Kevin. Thanks, Peter. So in this video, I wanna show you one of my favorite drills to help you improve your slice serve. And I wanna first explain why the slice serve is the, so important. Well. I use the slice serve so much because it's a great serve to open up the court, especially in the beginning of a match a lot of times. I'll slice my opponent out wide and it really leaves me the rest of the court to kind of do my dirtiness and nastiness, whether it be an inside out forehand or just running them if they go down the line with my back into the open court. Either way, it puts me in a position to hurt my opponent and I want to hopefully give you this opportunity to do it too. So what's the drill we're going to work on today? It's a progression drill call or what I call the walk back drill, which is really simple. We're gonna start really close up to net, and I set up some uh, targets with the balls. Firstly, the targets are set probably about uh, a foot and a half back from the service line corner. So you get the first ball, and then you get the second ball and third ball. Now that's gonna kind of gauge how what I call how dirty your slice is. The shorter and wider you can get your uh, slice to go, the dirtier your slice is gonna be. Now 
The reason why that's so important is because the more you can draw your opponent out wide, you're going to do a couple things. First of all, you're going to put them in a position off the court, giving you more court. But what I like to say is when you use a slice a, t uh, a lot of times, it puts your opponent in a position where they have to make a decision. A lot of times if you hit a ball up the middle, well, you know, they feel comfortable, they hit it back or whatever they want to do. But when you really start pulling your opponent off the court, they have to make a decision. They're off the court, they have to make a decision. What am I going to do? Am I going to go deep cross court and I still, you know, there's a possibility uh, by that return they go up the line? Or am I going to go for it down the line and then still have to run for it? It really makes your uh, opponent make a decision about what they're going to do. And by doing that, you put more pressure. Whenever you can make your opponent make a bunch of decisions, you're adding pressure. When they don't have to make decisions, when they're not worried about the consequences of what they're going to do, they don't feel any pressure. So it's kind of twofold. Not only by putting them out on uh, the pulling them off the court, but psychological and thinking that, you know what, now I'm off the court, I have to make a better shot or hit a higher quality shot to make sure I don't get hurt. So it's really twofold. twofold. I can't even say it. Twofold. Okay, we got it. So here we go. The walk back drill is basically I've lined up these balls and we're going to do a progression coming all the way back from the front ball that's closest to the net um, all the way back to this position back here at the baseline. I usually have one or two balls extra in my pocket. Now, technically, there's one major thing that you need to understand to hit a great slice serve. And what that is, is the racket face angle for the slice. It's really important that you understand that when we're going up and hitting the slice, that we're not making a flat contact, where I think sometimes, you know, uh, uh, they think you're like carving around the corner. You know, the ball's not gonna stay on the strings that long. What it is, is that when you do make contact, this is the back of the ball here. This would be more like a flat serve. For the slice, we're gonna start making contact on the outside of the ball. Now, depending on how much slice you hit, is gonna depend on the, the uh, amount of racketed speed you can build as you're hitting this ball and brushing it to the side. And this is a great drill to kind of like really exaggerate that and get you to understand that in a very progression fashion. Okay, so here we go. So again, for this drill, all I'm gonna do is simply start here. Uh, I'm not even really worried about going through uh, like my full motion as far as using my legs or anything. I'm really working on my racket face angle. And all I'm gonna do is kind of locate the target, I'm going to really make sure that my racket face is looking in that direction of where the target is and oh, make sure my toss is right and okay now you can really see that I got that to go off the court that's in the kind of uh, last stage which is if uh, later on we're going to play a little bit of a game is that that would get me three points so the first uh, ball from the service line to the first ball will get me one point from the second ball to the third uh, from the first ball to the second ball will get me two points and from the uh, second ball to the third ball will get me three points. That will get me three points. So, and I will continue this all the way back. So again, okay, that will probably get me one point. And you can really start developing. Oh, that would get me three points. That was, a, that was a money ball. And I work my way all the way back. That's a three-pointer. So you can really see how, don't do it on a winning day either. But. You can really see how this drill will work and it helps you miss that one wide. And another thing why I wanted you to keep one or two balls in your pocket is if you miss one, just take a ball out of your pocket, go back, make a slight adjustment in the racket face, okay? Ugh, oh, missed that one a little bit wide. But you can still see how I'm slicing and getting the feel for the slice. I'm gonna still work my way back, okay? Slight miss, I'm gonna make an adjustment there. Bingo. So you can see how I've worked my way all the way back Oh, not slicing enough, all the way back to the baseline. This is a great drill to develop the feel of having the racket in the right place. Again, go ahead and do this type of drill and keep track of score. Once you feel really comfortable doing this drill, just start from this uh, position here on the baseline serving and you would set up the same targets that blew away. Uh, again, you might want to use maybe a can instead of balls that might roll off and uh, keep track of what's your score, what's your count. Now. If you do this with, I would say, um, let's say we use five balls and the maximum amount of number we could get is 15 being the third position, then you know if you get anywhere above a 10, then you have a pretty good slice serve. That's the way to gauge your slice serve. Can you hit five balls and have uh, uh, get at least 10 of them or get at least an <laughs> amount of 10 points? Uh, you have a great slice serve. If you're in the like five, zero to five range, well, this is a great drill to work on it. If you're above that, start working on that racket uh, head um, or the racket angle so you can really get the right racket face to get the ball to consistently go there.
I really hope you've enjoyed that training. It's a great drill that you can use to take your slice serve to the next level. Now, I have one other training that I'd like to offer you, and it's totally free. It's the five most common mistakes that you can be making on your slice serve. In this training, I'm gonna go over what I think are five of the biggest mistakes that most players are making that really takes their slice serve into the dumps, and we don't want that. So, I'm gonna cover things like, what mistake could you be making with your toss? What mistake could you be making with your opposite shoulder that could be hurting your slice serve? And also, what mistake could you be making that constantly takes that slice serve into the net? So, to get this training, all you need to do is there should be a link popping up somewhere around here. Click that link, it'll take you to, take you to a special page where you can sign up for my training on the slice serve and also Peter's training on the kick serve. I recommend you sign up for both. So, once you click this, you'll be asked for your name and email and we will send the training straight to your inbox. You'll get instant access. That's all you need to do. Now, so I hope you sign up for both because it's super important if you wanna take your serve game to the next level. So go ahead and click the link that should be popping up somewhere here and, and make sure you click both trainings and sign up for it because I promise you, we'll help you take your game to the next level. So this is Kevin Garlington from TotalTennis.Domination.com. Go out and play tough. All right, guys, make sure you check out Kevin's stuff because he is truly a top-notch coach. Now, what I have for you is I've got some really personalized training on the kick serve. I find that people struggle with five common problems. That is either A, they're just not consistent with their kick serve, or maybe they don't get enough power. Another thing that people complain about is that they can't place the kick serve. Either it goes in the box, they really don't know where it's gonna go in the box, and then there's also this thing called bite and bounce that you want in your kick serve to where it hits, it really goes up at your opponent so people can kick it, but it's just got nothing on it. And finally, there's some people who go, well, you don't know what you don't know, right? I really don't even know where to start on the kick serve. So if any of these are common problems for you, I'm gonna address each one in the free training. Another thing I'm also gonna do is show you six essentials you're gonna need that any kick serve needs to really be effective in match play. And all you gotta do is click the link to get started or you can go into the description box and you can get both of our free trains there. Thanks so much for watching and make sure to comment, like, and subscribe.